I was searching Twitter the other day and I found this really interesting pattern for creating components called the base component pattern. So Michael Theason was talking about it in this Twitter post and I thought I would show you guys how this works and how it's actually really useful, especially when you get into more complicated apps and you have a lot of reusable components that you need to deal with. All right, so let's imagine that you have an app, you have a Hello World app here and you wanna create a button. This is what I would normally do. I create a button, Hello World, Maybe I'll add some classes to it, this. In this case, I'm using some utility classes from Tailwind. And if I save that, I have my, my hello world. Now being a good developer, I'm probably like, well, this is great, but I need to add this to 20 different places. And I want it to be a little bit more flexible and I want to have some defaults to it. So what do you normally do? Yep, you probably refactor it into its own component or own primitive. So we'll come back over here to this new normal button component and I'll just copy and paste this button in here. And then I'll replace the code in here with the new button. And voila, I have the same button, but now it's in a nice reusable component. However, obviously this isn't very flexible. The first thing I would probably think about is what sort of props that I need to pass in to make some changes. So obviously the first one is, I probably wanna change the text of this, hello world. So how would I do that? So let's assume we just want to add a, a basic prop in. So I'm, I'm going to add one in called text, hello. And of course I'll need to define that. Great, so I have my define props here, I have my text. And now if I come over here and I have hello, cool, it says hello. If I change it to hello one, two, three, you see one, two, three as we expect. And so we have now created a nice reusable component. But let's say we need to make a few changes. Our boss comes around and says, oh, by the way, uh, we wanna add in an icon for this component. So how would you make the change? Well, obviously we can't put anything in here, but let's say we needed a hard code at just an icon in here. So I'll just add it inside here, uh, right above the text. All right, there we go. I have my new icons, my cap. I already have this component, it's just an SVG. I put a width of eight. Great, now I have my hello one, two, three. I've added it in and this assumes that every single button will have this icon on it. However, now my boss comes to me and says, oh, by the way, we actually want this to be a little bit more flexible. There is a edge case where we don't want this cap in the button that we're gonna be reusing. Could you make it more flexible? And since you're a good view developer, you know right away, well, I could create some sort of prop to pass in the icon, but we have this amazing thing called slots. Let's create a default slot that I can just pass anything in. So let's try that. Okay, so I did a little bit of refactoring. I no longer need the prop being passed in because I'm just gonna use a default slot here. I'm, I'm having the default be just the icon. And then instead of passing everything in as props, I can go in the index view and between the opening and closing brackets, I can put the text and whatever I want. So in this case, I'm gonna put hi there and then I'm gonna pass in the icons, my cap. Here it is, now I have hi there and the cap. And so now I've made it a little bit more flexible and I can make more changes. But now let's say my boss comes to me and says, oh, by the way, we need this in a specific format. I want this to say hi there and I want a bar or a separator between the icon and the text. Okay, so let's make that refactor. I have a couple of choices here. I think probably the best bet is to create an additional slot. So maybe I have a slot direct directly for icons and a slot directly for, the, for everything else. So I'm gonna create an additional slot for this, a name slot. So now I have a slot for the icon where I can just put specifically the slot for the icon. I have a separator. I'm just gonna hard code it as this, this bar here. And then I have a default slot, which I'm just gonna leave it as default. Now, if I come back to this index view, I have to then start adding in templates. If we add a template in here, we know with the one for icon, we can just add icon in here. And then we can put in my icon for my cap. And then I'll need a default one as well. So I'll add in a default slot. And I always like to specifically mark these as default and they'll put in some text. And if we come back here, now we have, here's the icon, here's a separator, some text. Doesn't look quite right. Maybe I need to put this in a div of some kind and let's add some classes. So I added some changes here. Now I have some spans, I add some more classes. 
And this is kind of what I want all my buttons to look like. I'm gonna have an icon here and then the separator and then some text. Now what happens uh, I find quite often is that as projects grow and things change, people are gonna want more and more changes to this. So right now this is looking pretty ugly. Let's say we also wanted to add in a click handler. So we'd have to pass in at click here and maybe on click right here that every time you click it, it does something. You might wanna have some overrided classes. You might have to pass class in. And by the way, if you don't know anything you, you pass in as a prop that's not defined on the prop, inside the script setup will just be added to the top level of whatever fragment in, is in here, in this case, the button. But you could you could just imagine that this would become a whole lot more complicated. Maybe if you need to disable it, you have to then pass a disabled in here. You'd have to pass in your own icon. Maybe there's some additional changes. And what happens is after a while, this thing grows and grows and you're copying and pasting this huge amount of text to everywhere in your app and it becomes quite unruly. And at some point you're probably like, why did I even refactor this into its own component? I'm not saving any time because I have to override all these slots and I have to pass all this stuff in and all these props. And that's where the base component pattern comes in. So let's assume that this right now, this start normal button is our default. So we want something like this to be our default, but we want to have the flexibility to change it and to have different scenarios, let's say a disabled scenario. So let's see what that would take a look like. All right, let me show you how I did a quick refactor of this. First, I created the uh, base button. So I kind of renamed that component that we had before. This looks very similar to the one you just saw. I just renamed it to button.view or basically because we're in Nuxt, it's base button.view, the way the imports work in Nuxt. And then I created two other components. So let's first, let's take a look at this this base button. So if I uncomment this out, it looks like you expect it, just some text. This is essentially what we had before. If we want to have variants of this, so we'll assume that mostly in our app, this type of button we'll see everywhere. So this is gonna be our base. But if we have variants, like let's say a briefcase button. So instead of having this cap on here, like we see with this cap that we wanna have a briefcase. Now we could do the same thing we did before and override everything in the base button and then copy that everywhere we need it. But what I think is a much nicer and better way is I'll create a brief button like this. So this is the brief button, which is kind of abstracting away all that logic into its own component. So we still use base button, but now we use this template. We just pass in the icon, the new text that we want in. And if we go back to index.view and we uncomment it out, here it is. So now we have our brand new briefcase button. To make that point even more, here's a disabled button. So let's assume that we want to disable a button. We're going to have some special classes that we pass in for not allowed and cursor. This is tailwind. Uh, we also have a, a brand new icon. We're not going to change the default text, but we could if we wanted to. And now if we look at this one, so now here is our disabled text and our disabled button. So the idea is that everything you do inside your app and when you create components, you're always gonna have these edge cases. And these edge cases are gonna be an issue because you're perfectly, your perfect logic that you put in your component, you're gonna have to expose more things, more props, more slots, and it can become unwieldy. So rather than having people having to guess how to create a specific type of button and specific type of edge case and having to copy that in different places, you just create another component, you encapsulate that logic in it, and then you use that. So now I have three different types of buttons. I can easily comment them or uncomment them out. And I know that they're gonna be the look and feel that I want and I can reuse it. So if it becomes an edge case, but even if I use this edge case in more than one place, I know I'm protected. I'm not gonna to have to copy and paste a thing, uh, paste it to multiple places. And in very specific use cases, if I want to, I can still use the base button and override everything in it. So I really like this pattern. I really like the pattern where where uh, you just take complex problems and you abstract them out. So this really helps out with dry, so don't repeat yourself. We're also not uh, having it repeat ourself everywhere. You know, there's dry versus wet, right? Everything twice. Uh, I think this is kind of a good mix between the two. So let me know what you think about this pattern. If you guys like videos like this, where I kind of take some of these concepts and create videos out of them, let me know. I can do more of it. Uh, thanks, appreciate it. And also make sure, I have a mailing list. I don't know if you made it all the way to the end of this video, you are amazing and awesome. I don't know if you knew, I have a mailing list where I email 
about once every week or two, letting you know new videos that come out, any special deals, anything that I have out there that I find interesting. Uh, yeah, so sign up for my mailing list. That'd be awesome. Thanks.